All right, so here we are, here with uh, Stefan Nystrand, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, fine. Very fine. You? Uh, good, mate. Good. Uh, you, you're in, you're in Sweden right now? Yeah, I'm in Sweden. What part of Sweden you live in? Uh, Stockholm. Stockholm. So a little bit outside Stockholm. So nice. It's a capital. Nice. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you doing this. Just going back in history a little bit, our history, and then also sprint history. And um, I love to do that. I love to you know pull people from the past and get their stories, get their backstories, because I knew you as a, as a sprint legend, my friend, you were, you were everywhere in the early two thousands, you know, um, every final at Europeans, world championships, world short course. I mean, uh, Olympic games, you were, you were everywhere for a while there, man. And so you were kind of that, that guy that was, was a constant in sprinting on the world scene. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And a few other ones, maybe. I expect, <laughs> but yeah, it was a pretty long career. So it started out in 1999, I think, in the na uh, in national team. And then I quit at 2013, 2012, the last 2012. Olympics. Yeah, in London. Yeah, so you kind of went through the, the, the whole range of the suit era, you know, like in 2000 when they came out with the damn shark skin thing and then, yeah. and then all the different iterations they went through you basically had suits throughout your whole career all different range of suits so what what did you feel about just the change in technology as your career went on i think it was a little bit of a circus uh, with a really uh, fast suits at 2009 beginning mm -hmm. of 2008 but uh, it as, as you said like before 2000 i had like speedos and then it was the shark suit, I think, was a buzz about. And, um, and then it was the new print suits. And then um, then they got banned at 2009, I think. And then uh, uh, the last year, I swam in uh, regular jammers again. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. That was Crazy. quite a ride. Crazy swing there. But um, um, just going back to the start, I mean, Sweden is a country where it's it's small, but it's really powerful in terms of its swimming history. When you were growing up, who were your idols? Who were the people that you were watching on TV in Sweden? Yeah, when I was a really little boy, it was Anders Holmetsch, uh, 200 yeah. freestyle and 400 freestyle. He was a legend back then. Yeah. And then it was Lars Fjellander. Right. Um, so he was my idol then we got in the national team together and it was pretty cool um, yeah. so yeah i think he, me and lars was like 10 years in the national team oh, wow. he was an oldie oldie but goodie in the late years i gotta get him on to talk he he doesn't he doesn't talk much either i gotta get him on to talk. <laughs> actually i gotta get yeah. anders anders on as well he's a, he is a legend uh he, i remember watching him you know, in the early nineties doing his thing in the middle distance against, you know, guys like Kieran Perkins and people like that. He was, he was awesome to watch, man. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you then, how'd you get into swimming? Oh, the, the pretty regular way. My mom uh, put me on swim school and then it just uh, went by like that, uh, like two days a week, three days a week and on and yeah. it's starting to like, I was catching up. I was good at it. It was pretty fun. And then started to do the, the meters, you know, right. yeah, I started to do the meters and then it became less fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I've got this shirt on here. It says sprint revolution. Everybody sees me talking about this online. Yeah, I noted it. <laughs> I got to get you one, my friend. Um, you in, in terms of sprint revolution, we're talking about 2023, but you were you were the one back in early 2000s who kind of went against the grain for the first time. Like there were, you know, our competitors like Alexander Popoff and Michael Klim and people like this were were doing 100k weeks, you know, to sprint freestyle. Um, even Alan Bernard, people like that, they were doing a lot of yardage. You were kind of against the the grain, and from what I heard at the time, you were doing like three thousand a practice. You wouldn't do more than about twenty thousand a week. Uh, is that true? And and why did yeah. that? Why did why well, how did that happen? Uh, Why well, that's correct. Um, it started at I think around ninety eight, ninety nine. I was re pretty close to quitting swimming because I thought it was so boring. You know every like a well, partying and stuff and it was really close that i would quit and then my coach unforsell uh, she says like okay it's 
we're gonna make it fun for you. And uh, what do you want to do? And I like, I want to just do sprint stuff and uh, stuff, <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> so we started experimenting with that, and I I thought it was fun, and uh, then I kept going, and then it was still ups and downs during the two thousands. But um, um, yeah, we. We allocated the training more towards like what they do today. Uh, I think mm. it was pretty early uh, doing power acts way back. Mm. Uh, lots of sprinting, lots of short stuff. Um, what you see now, uh, yeah. but of course there were others as well. I think. <laughs> well, there wasn't there wasn't many people doing what you were doing back then. I think I think we were starting to understand sprint. I think. I think we were just starting to value sprinting as well, right? Like when, when Popoff moved to Australia in 93, we started to put a value on sprinting in Australia. I know that for sure. You know, we wanted to, we wanted to win that relay in 2000. That was kind of a goal for many years leading up to 2000 is to, is to win this four by one freestyle relay. In order to do that, you've got to have sprinters and you've got to have depth. And so Australia put a lot of time and energy into that. But still, there was a lot of yardage happening and um, people didn't really understand sprinting. So for you to go out on a limb like that and say, I want to do power training, I want to do speed training, I want to do fast, you know, I want to work on my skills, like my starts, my underwaters, my my breakouts, my turns. That's That was pretty unusual, man. Yeah, but still hadn't catched up globally everywhere like mm. still a lot of meter uh all my during all my career me and my coach got like mm, questioned about uh, right. the the mileage the meters sure. uh, why yeah. don't you swim more um but but it's like yeah 50 definitely but you can do 100 as well like with the sprint training um yeah talk to me about that why 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 do you think that you could swim a hundred? Why did you think? Why did it give you confidence? Why? What? What were the things that told you that you could get up on the block and swim a fast hundred? Because you ultimately ended up breaking the world record in short course, two thousand seven. I watched this uh, forty-five second swim you did back in two thousand seven, just a couple of hours ago. I was like, oh my god! I mean, he he destroyed you destroyed the competition and and clearly could swim a hundred. So, what gave you the confidence to feel like the training could allow you to do that? <sighs> I really don't know. It's like they 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 report each other like fifty and hundred. I think mm. if you go good at fifty, you go good at hundred. Um, but it's like forty five seconds. I think a lot of the credit by that race is that I did a lot of competition. So you right. know, you, you race pacing at competitions. Mm. That yeah. was a very good thing for me. Right. Um, so. Yeah, but it's like it's about the details, the uh, recovery, um, right. sprinting, the balance, very much the balance stuff. Uh, I always swam like one one uh, race pace fifty each week as a control spot every mm. like Friday or Saturday, uh, almost during all my career. Um, so if I, if if it was a bad time at that moment, we. Uh, taper a little bit so the balance so we don't get too much overtraining or wow. yeah you know i mean again it's like it's things that i'm talking about now it's things that we're seeing now and and um and to be honest with you i, I was probably having these thoughts and ideas around the same time but i didn't have the guts to do it i certainly didn't have a coach that was willing to say um this is how we're going to do things that is so different to everybody else so like it was just so far advanced and and again there was rumors that you were doing these things and even back in australia people didn't believe it they're like oh that's just a rumor there's no way he's doing that <laughs> he, he he wouldn't be able to swim that fast doing that training you know uh, yeah that's pretty really fun but i got lucky i, I got a really good coach i had yeah. the same coach for 13 years so i never mm. changed right so yeah right. That's amazing. Now, two two things that I feel like you did really well that was advanced as well uh, in the pool itself was you really mastered the straight arm. You didn't invent the straight arm. I, I credit that to Michael Clem and Gennady Turetsky uh, as the first people that kind of bought, bought in the straight arm swimming. But to me, you were the first person that really mastered it. I felt like Michael had a 
had a pretty good grip on it, but I think you took it to another level where when I look at your freestyle, you were really coming over the top, uh, like a windmill, like straight over yeah. the top. Um, how did you, how did you come up with that? Why did you, uh, you know, where did the stroke come from for you? It's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Uh, it's nothing we like thought about. Like, uh, I only focused on the underwater, the underwater drag or mm. the force and, uh, with great stroke length and, uh, like power and the catch and stuff. And then the over, over the surface, mm. uh, just came naturally. It's uh, like, I really don't know, but I, but I never, I never done like high elbow technique, uh, right. even when I was younger, I think. Oh, so, okay. so actually just, uh, I think it's more smooth. Let's go faster. And then uh, with the rotation and the power exchange, it's easier to do over the, the straight arm, like right. the windmill, like right. you said. I think so. When it's, when it's connecting for you, what are the things that you're trying to do? What are the things you're feeling? Explain it to people that don't fully understand straight arm freestyle what is it when it's flowing really well what are you doing you know it's flowing really well um you know the strength uh, the core and um mm -hmm. like uh, much power the kicks and right. then i'm just trying to catch in the front and then power through and while i thought power through um it's like rotate and push backwards and then the shoulder lifts over uh, and um, you know not directly down but mm. I, I lift forward and then catch oh. um, so you you keep your armpits dry as you come up out of the water like that yeah you get your yeah. armpits out and then i have a little i have a little hip movement when i do the 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 stroke with her in left arm Oh, always. So it's like is that something that you were trying to do, or just came no, natural? No, it's just came natural, and I right. think that helps with the um, with the flow, with the pace. Mm -hmm. You know, and I I've obviously seen it, by the look of it, right? By the look of it, you had balance in your stroke. You're like a windmill we talk about, where one side is up, the other side is down. So, like, were you trying to have balance in your technique? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Now, what about in the in the catch itself? When I look at your stroke underwater, it does look like you drive your hand down, but it also looks like you you bend a little bit underwater, like you get a little bit of a high elbow underwater. It's not it's not a direct straight arm underwater. To me, it looked like you had some bend. Is that correct? Yeah, I tried to get the the elbow over the hand directly off the in touched in the water. So like, oh, oh it's elbow high. And then drag right but you still are driving the hand down a little bit further than a normal like 200 freestyle let's say correct yeah i i'm not i'm not uh, straighting out at that way but i want to have the catch with the elbow raised a little bit like a millisecond mm. and then then instead of straighting out uh, underwater mm. i want to have the position already over the water when i land the hand in the water oh, in the front yeah yeah so you want to you want to basically immediately get onto the catch you don't yeah. want any sliding or pushing no or, no no so instead of dropping down and then reach forward and then do the catch i'm trying to lift forward over the water and then do the catch directly right um Okay, very interesting. And then the other thing, obviously, that you had mastered and done really well and, and kind of advanced for our sport, I feel like, is the underwater. Were you doing a lot of underwater training? No, nothing. nothing. Not too much. No, no, no uh, butterfly kicks. No, I was pretty bad at that. Uh, but um, um, I got naturally high speed during the turns out. The turns uh -huh. and the speed out from the turn. Uh -huh. Uh, if that's uh, natural or talent or I got really fast uh, meter per second there. So, okay. but then I have the, uh, 
I have the meter per second with me during the first character to break out. I gotcha. Strong trademark as well. But I, I've never, I never trained a lot of uh, butterfly kicks. There's, okay. I, I, I would not consider myself a specialist in butterfly kicks. Right, right. Um, you, you talk about natural talent, but obviously you're doing a type of training that is different than everybody else. So your speed in and out of the wall, um, you're actually training that as well, right? Like you were doing fast swimming in practice where you would come in and out of a wall, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it was all the moments like I, I, I could like in the start, I had 30 moments, uh, 30 details to think about trying to, uh, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of bits and then right. the breakouts, like five bits and right. then the swimming, a lot of bits and then the turn, a lot of bits, yeah. like just, just details, details, details. Right. And so those details you're drilling and, and practicing on a weekly basis, and then you're going to the competition and then you're, you're putting them into practice because you're competing a lot as well. Yeah. Yeah. But the secret is to, you know, got a high, low, um, <laughs> what's the English name? I don't know. Um, uh, high, high level, even when you're, you're always going to have a high level. So you like you're, training, training at um, a high quality type thing. Yeah, high quality, high right. quality all the time. And you right. you should never you should never like do bad races. Then you cast just aerobic, uh, easy speed, and like chill. So, so you were it, doing it's either, you, you... It's either all out or easy. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, so you're either swimming easy technique or you're swimming fast and you're thinking about the 20 different things that you should be doing while yeah. you're swimming fast. Yeah. So it's, it's well, very, very in tune with what you're doing uh, every, yeah. every day in practice. Yeah. The lowest uh, level, you know, um, the lowest threshold you, you gotta, the more your details, the more, the more you nail it on the competition, you know? Right. Well, right. The higher like, emphasis on skill and detail. Yeah. Then you can, then, and the high quality. No, I don't remember the English word, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> when it came to, when it came to high quality per week, were you having like a day on where you'd swim really fast and then a day off where you'd swim really slow in terms of recovery? How were you putting in recovery into the, your weekly schedule? Each other day, really. Yeah. It was each other day. And then uh, the 50, like the test 50, uh, how, how the training progressed uh, was right. always on, I think, Saturdays. Yeah, Saturday. always on Saturdays. So like all the week preparing and then yep. do the race. Uh -huh. And then like, okay, yeah, good. We progress during the week uh, and uh, we still have a good time. So keep going. And then next one. But we still had macro cycles and like the big picture as well, you know, in the weightlifting and stuff. So okay. it yeah. was like, um, yeah, a setup for the next week all the time. Right, the right, right. Yeah. So you're basically stacking weeks on top of each other too. Yeah. Right? You're yeah. trying to get better and better and better. Yeah. And eliminate injury and illness. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. never, I like, I was never ill or injured. So it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing how advanced you were for back then. Um, <laughs> no, it's no wonder you beat me at the Olympics, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I think in, I think in Athens, you finished fourth, right? Yeah. In the 50 free, I finished sixth. Yeah. You got me, you son of a bitch. It was a good Olympic. It was a good Olympic. <laughs> it was a good Olympic. That, was a, that was a fun one. Yeah. That was a fun one. How many Olympic finals did you swim in? Mm. I think it was Athens, uh, the 53, and then the Beijing, both finals, mm. 1500. Right. It was really bad, Beijing. Oh, my God. Why? Uh, I got burnt out, I think, during the, uh, the spring and summer. It's like too much favorite, too much media, too much circus. I, mm. I said yes to everything. Mm. But then when I after the competition, like, wow, I was really burnt out. Damn. Right. Right. So. 
What, what did you? What was your impression of uh, Caesar the first time you you met him and saw him compete? Because he was he was different, right? He was very much uh, kind of that that guy that was in your face a little bit. He's slapping himself in the call room and things like that. that. Was a little bit different for us. We didn't really see that before Caesar came along. Yeah, I had the most respect. Uh, I think I I never got to know him uh, actually. Uh, I think it was one one small competition together, like um, like a competition in Italy. I think mm. talked a little bit, but he was really talented. He's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he was really good. But th that that whole two thousand eight too was was a crazy year where the suits completely changed again, and and we had a we had a situation where we had to deal with the whole suit situation. What what was your what was your feeling around that time where, where all that, th that that was going on? Were you sponsored by any suit company at that point? Nah, yeah, I think it was, I think it was Arena. Um, no, I, I really don't remember, but I, I got the suits and I, I, I didn't really like it. Uh, I think it was uh, un <laughs> unfair competition in a way, like it leveled out the... The natural um, competition. The, um, yeah, you know. Um, yeah, like people that weren't people that weren't buoyant or didn't sit high in the water yeah, and allowed yeah, them to kind of sit exactly. up higher, right? Yeah. So, so I, I thought it was like, but damn, I, I'll do my best, you know, from the year before <laughs> and to yeah. now. But yeah. But I, I I can't complain about that really. It was my own fault. It didn't go as well. Yeah. So, I mean, we, I look, we look back and see things. Yeah. Yeah. Would, would do you blame having such a great year the year before where you are breaking short course world records and swimming so fast? Is that did that contribute to you being complacent in some way? Yeah, a little bit about the suits. Yeah, it was. <laughs> really. <laughs> But it might it, it might have not been the suits. It might be myself as well. So, you know. Yeah. What it, what happens to you it, when you? It went well, two thousand and nine. So, I think it was so many bits. It's not not only the suit, you know. So, yeah. Well, there was another, another, another drastic change in two thousand nine with the suits, right? So we go from kind of the X glide or, or whatever the speedo thing was to the X glide in two thousand nine, right? Yeah. That was pretty insane, you know. Oh, blue 70. No, I need to have this. I need to have this. And then they competing all the arena speed, or you know. Yeah. Uh, how how can we like how much can we do new pre and stuff? And then they like just let loose to the um Rome 2009. Yeah. Like it crazy. was just a suit war, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that was madness. What what suit yeah. did you end up racing in, in 2009 in Rome? Uh, arena arena did yeah. you like the x squad is that arena yeah yeah x um yeah i liked it like it's uh, you could swim fast uh, when it was not tapered as well <laughs> it evened out you were all be fast with that suit you know yeah so yeah. yeah it was pretty boring you know like and they got water inside here all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it it <laughs> so depended like on your on your body, body type too. Yeah. <laughs> um, you also had another experience with one of my athletes, uh, a couple probably a lot, uh, Fred Bousquet. Fred Fred Bousquet, I feel like had one of the greatest swims of all time. When we when we got out of the suit area and went back to kind of the just the the shorts, you know, um, going back to something that resembled swimming of, of the of the beginning of time kind of thing, where they took this suit away completely. But Fred Fred ended up going twenty one three in in Budapest, I think it was twenty ten, and you were right next to him, right? Yeah, it was our best uh, off suit time ever. So. Oh really? Where'd you go there? Uh, twenty one sixty nine, I think. Oh yeah, it was with yeah. the jam jammers, right? Yeah, jammers. It was like my last false competition, I think. So really, but yeah, Fred Bisque, mm, talented, fast. Yeah, yeah, similar to you in to, in the way he swam job, too, Brad. you know. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I got the talent. Uh, it, it came to me and I got the fast. It came to me. I didn't really, I didn't make him talented. <laughs> I didn't make him fast. I just, I, I, I got, I got this beautiful pencil like this. And all I did was uh, sharpen it a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sounded like easy. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't difficult to coach Fred Busquet and make him swim really fast. It, it, by that stage, I was adopting the same theories that you had adopted five, six years before that. You know, um, I was I was doing skill work, power work, detail work. You know, um, fast and slow swimming. That was it. There was no in between really. We went. We cut out all the VO two max. We cut out a lot of the threshold, so really it was just um, you know power swimming. And and Fred was able to swim a really fast hundred as well in two thousand nine. He got he got bronze in the hundred freestyle. So um, yeah, I I agree with everything that you're talking about. Um, and and I it's it still amazes me that there are a number of programs doing that now, but we're still seeing even even in 2023 where people haven't caught on to that way of training you know uh, i think it's coming it's on the way they're really on the way yeah. especially with the sprint revolution i think so it's gonna catch up like you know cam mcavoy and stuff yeah. and they're doing really good stuff yeah. and i think that's that will be the the main thing about all sprinting uh, for the future as well i think so they're doing it right so yeah do you do you think it's possible for us to have multiple people under 21 seconds in the 53 yeah, with, with exactly. the current suits we have. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. It's uh, because it's, we're already there. There's a, a few guys who can do yeah. sub 21. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think so when they catch up and uh, the refine the sprinting and the, um, the resistance training and the details and uh, like go all in for it like and recovery and you know optimizing definitely yeah. i think so yeah. um, i wish you, i could do that even better <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> you're you're back swimming again aren't you you're doing some master yeah. swimming nah nah and doing uh, nationals in uh, one and a half week i think oh oh wow nationals. so like oh. open nationals yeah, so I'm doing a little little comeback, and then I then I'll see how much time I got, and if I want to do the long course in spring. So I'll uh -huh. I'll see. I'll, I'll, I've trained since August now for since August, and before August I haven't been in the pool for three years prior to that. Wow. So yeah. So where where are you at? You feel like are you are you doing similar training to what you were doing in the past? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I swim by myself all the time. So <laughs> I got a little pool here uh, where I live and uh, do some weightlifting and trying to do as best as I can. Uh, yeah. But it's not it's far from like time and um, uh, filming and, uh, you know, top notch mm. stuff. But yeah, the... it's getting there. I'm getting better and better. I feel quite good shape now. Uh, I think it will be will be good at the nationals i think wow. i have a goal to do sub 22 in the short course at least nice uh, how old are you now 42 wow oh, man that'll be uh that'll be a world record wouldn't it <laughs> nah <laughs> <laughs> a world record for a 42 year old that's for sure i uh, think what's the masters record I'm gonna check well, it out i don't think anyone's gone to, under 22 have... over 40 yeah, but you have to you have to do it on a master competition, I think. Yeah, really? I don't know. I'm I'm not really. <laughs> You're uh, not into masters. <laughs> not into it. I just I just race in my backyard against people. So if you ever want to come to California, we can race in the backyard. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> now, um, so maybe there's hopes that we we could see you at another World Short Course Championships. You think? uh i would not confirm that that depends how it goes so with the training now and you know i i got three kids at home and uh, you know small kids mm. and uh, yeah and i work i work regular times so just trying to fit in between like as uh, many sessions a week i i might be able to yeah uh, as long as it's fun it's really fun now so yeah yeah, yeah. that's good man congrats that's awesome <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you. I love it. Now, just just going back real quick, we we did swim against other legends, you know, um, and we I feel like we were in an era where there's just so many great sprinters to talk about, you know. Um, how did you feel about growing up with with the people that we were racing against the, in the early two thousands, mid two thousands? You know, I, I was so I was so impressed by like intimidated or impressed by Alexander Popov. Um, mm. You know, when I saw him, it was in the same cold room. Like wow, starstruck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I was. Like... Yeah. And Mark Foster, do you remember Mark Foster? Yeah, Mark Foster. Yeah. 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 Yeah, like the silver wolf. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, both those guys are European too. So you would have you would have seen them a little bit more because you would have raced them at European championships and things like that. But like you wouldn't have got to see the Americans much, you know. And and, yeah. and you and I were in the in the call room in two thousand four when Gary came in with the with the robe on. What did, what did yeah. you think about that experience? Uh, kick ass. That's really good. <laughs> Uh, so doesn't he get disqualified? Like, well, nah, nah. So <laughs> he was something. It was really cool. And then, uh, then I, I'm really impressed by Anthony Irwin as well. Mm. Like two gold medals, uh, 2016 comeback. Yeah. So impressive. God damn. Wow. Yeah, I know. He he is incredible too. Just just you talk about. Just natural talent, both those guys. Not not to say that they didn't work hard at their craft and didn't have a great understanding and feel for it, but the the natural talent was just beyond. A lot of times when I would be up close with Anthony, I was like, I would just be like, I can't, I can't do what he does. Like I just can't do that. You know, <laughs> it's freaky. There was a little bit in Sweden, I think. You know, Peter Aronson, I think he did a like a national team relay. Uh, way back and then and then and they spoke at my club i think like to the youths uh, uh -huh. at the moment when i was a lead coach there um so yeah i met him a few times like off a little bit right but not much and uh he talked about he talked about his journey journey uh, yeah. like he go, he went to amsterdam right and uh, mm -hmm. you know yeah. went bananas and then they found god i think something like that <laughs> he definitely went bananas for a while but um, <laughs> yeah and then he found fast swimming again but uh yeah <laughs> but um what about sweden what, where are we at in sweden these days it's uh it seems like the women are doing really well what are, what's happening with the men in sweden uh, i i really don't know we like we like pretty small nations like nine ten million people uh yeah. And I think it's like it's raw talent. And when one one um, surfaces, one comes up, and then it's very much focus on that. And it's been uh, cycles as well as the men's team and the women's are better at times. Mm. And right now it's Sara Sjöström carrying it all with a few others. Um, but uh, at the moment on the male side, it's like Björn Seliger, really. Oh, Bjorn, yeah, yeah, Bjorn, yeah. Bjorn's in um in Cal, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coming yeah. back to nationals, so I'm gonna compete with him. He's quick, man. He's he's talented too. I just I was yeah, just down in Cal really a few weeks ago. He he's fast. Yeah, he's really fast. Yeah, I'm sharing for him. Yeah, no, no, he's a, he's a good guy. He's a really good guy. I, I hope he, he I hope he can get it together because he's a, he's a talent too, man. He works hard, trust me, but he. He's one of those guys that thinks a lot, you know, and uh, and sometimes you've just got to turn your brain off, right, in, in sprinting. Yeah. 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 I'm going to talk to him about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I did too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, is that is yeah. that true for you? Did you, when you were having your best swims, were you just free of thought during those periods? Yeah. 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 Free of thought. Yeah. Um... I never, I never did any mental training or something. So, um, mm. um, it's it has come from from yourself, you know. Uh, the one of the things I'm most satisfied about is I could have a high level during such a long time, uh, and so or, and it was ups and downs, of course. Uh, right. But to to still do that length of time, 
Uh, I'm really proud of that by myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. The, the longevity. I mean, again, I think yeah. you, you were doing things differently than everybody else where you were allowing yourself to recover and swim fast and prepare and race. And that, that allows you to get to the next competition without being beat down and beat down and beat down. It's like you're, you're, you're racing and resting and, and recovering and then racing, resting, recovering, that kind of thing. And, and it allows you that longevity of, of a season too, correct? Yeah. Yeah, correct. Yeah. But if I go back to like Sweden and uh, the swimming sites, I think it's a little bit of stroke of luck when a good swimmer comes up in Sweden. Um, and then it's like all the other things. But but I can see like the youth nowadays yeah. uh, are not willing, generally speaking, not willing to put in the effort and time uh, to to really take it the next level. Uh, and I, I I think it's like there with the computer and screens and you know mm. the society as a whole. Uh, and I don't know how it is in other countries, but I I see that in Sweden as well. Uh, but mm. I, I think the other the other countries in swimming and top level and so have uh, have um, gone have been um, they are better in Sweden right now. So Sweden has uh, lost some some weight to the other nations. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, definitely. I feel like there was a time where Sweden was very very powerful and strong in swimming. Yeah. And it seems like they've they've they're going through a you know a. Re, a, a I don't know what you call it, but uh, they're not as powerful as they used to be. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. What else was I going to say here? I was going to ask you about um, old Cam McAvoy. What, what's your thoughts on him and his resurgence? You know, he he was in a program where he was getting beat down and and just uh, s stagnant. He, he didn't progress for four or five years, and then all of a sudden he goes away has these thoughts and comes back and changes his training and takes control of it and, and starts to swim power swimming. And then all of a sudden he's the fastest man in the world. It's, it's pretty remarkable, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty remarkable and impressive. And I think you're doing the right thing, totally the right thing. Uh, yeah. And um, what I've catched up, you know, with the resistance training and uh, core training and like, oh. yeah in the in the sci very scientific way but still um still a, a lot of feeling and um um yeah you yeah. know yeah yeah so, he, he's balancing that science and the art a little bit yeah yeah i think yeah. that's a really good formula yeah 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 i think i think it is too and i think we're going to see more people catch on hopefully soon did let me ask you a question did you ever swim at 2000 for time <laughs> no no way no <laughs> <laughs> but but when we do the thing like sponsor sponsor swim uh when i was a youth and it was like two hours on time and doing a lot of meters as possible and then we got like currency by each oh. meter and they oh. fundraised into all the camps and and uh and the club, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. That's like a swim wild, Two yeah. hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to raise some money, but not for training purposes. No, no, <laughs> uh, no. I, I would never do those two thousand. I never did it. And I, I seen you there. I seen yeah. that. What yeah. you, what you meaning about that? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's pretty crazy, you know. Yeah, it's silly. Well, the silly thing about it is they're they're using it in Australia to identify talent and say if you want to come to this camp where we're identify everybody you have to do this 2000 for time to get into the camp you know it's like it's crazy that you're you're saying we identify you as talent but in order to come to the camp you have to do this crazy thing that has nothing to do with with sprint swimming now yeah. i understand it for maybe like an anders holmets you know but like for stefan nistrand it's like makes no sense at all i would never make it to that camp I guess tell you that, um, <laughs> but talent is measured by so many other ways. You know? right. It's like yeah. two thousand trial. Oof. Yeah. No. No. It makes no, no, no. sense. 
So, uh, well, listen, man. Uh, thanks for the chat today. Uh, good luck. Um, uh, it's it's interesting. We're going to be able to see you race again and compete and keep an eye on you and hopefully you have fun with it. But hopefully uh, something happens in the next couple of weeks. We get to see some results, man. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks to me. Good to be it. here. It was really yeah. fun. Yeah. All right. Cheers, mate. Take care. Yeah. Bye, Brett. Bye.